Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV, where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes from a featured category. Today's category is Cooking with Kiddos. I'm Beth, and today I'm, a, I'm again joined by Katie and Elizabeth to tell us about the recipe. So Elizabeth, tell us about yours. Okay, well, all right, I'm a, probably a bad start for this week, but I have a, I have a recipe. So, um, I don't have kids of my own yet, so I do not frequently cook with kids. I do have three nieces, but they're little, so they, like, they're not ready yet even to be, like, stirring, because that would just be a disaster. But, um, so I kind of interpreted this as maybe, like, a recipe that you could have kids do a part of and also kind of a recipe that kids would eat. So that was a little bit of my interpretation. And this is my third and final installment from uh, the cookbook I've been loving, The Vegetable Eater, which I did return. So we are done with it. Um, and actually, because I had to return it, it had holds. I don't have the recipe anymore. I forgot to take a picture. So this is from memory. So if you do just for citation purposes, this might not be exactly what it says, but I remember it pretty well. So basically, this these are for healthier quesadillas. Um, so you take a zucchini, you shred it on a grater, and then you put it, you squeeze it in through, um, you squeeze it in a like thin dish towel or a couple layers of paper towel to get the water out. You put that in a bowl with a can of rinsed black beans, a cup of shredded um, Monterey Jack cheese, and some spices. So it called to make it pretty spicy with smoked paprika, cayenne, cumin, chili powder but I was thinking if you were making this with kids you would probably ease back on the spices and maybe just do a little bit because it ended up being pretty spicy um so it's kind of a zucchini based vegetarian quesadilla filling but a really good way to use up some zucchini and there's obviously still the cheese so it's nice and melty all good um so set that aside and then you're going to make a really delicious salsa that goes with it which is corn a uh, thinly sliced jalapeno, cilantro, um, a bunch of lime juice, and a uh, chopped up avocado, salt and pepper. Simple, delicious. Oh, and sorry, some um, three thinly sliced scallions. Super important. And then, you know, you take your flour tortilla, you're putting it in the pan, you're spreading some of your quesadilla mix on it, another tortilla, just cooking it till it's getting crispy, flip it, crispy on the other side, and you are serving it with, it called for the salsa and sour cream. Um, I use Greek yogurt because that's typically what I do. Um, if you were cooking with kids, you know, I don't know if the salsa would be too spicy. They wouldn't have to have it. They could have the quesadilla just with some sour cream. I feel like if it's tomato season, you could absolutely throw some fresh tomatoes on there. Um, but it was really good and easy. And I did like getting a little bit more veg in there between the salsa and the zucchini. And I really genuinely think kids would eat this because it still tastes like a quesadilla. It's cheesy. You put some sour cream on there and it was really good. Um, so I'm going to keep it in my repertoire, especially for using up zucchini, which is always a thing in the summer. Um, and I think like an older kid could absolutely like stir up the mixture, stir up the salsa, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, I'm not super experienced, but I do think this recipe could be good for kids. And certainly if they were a little older, they could start helping with some of it. Um, so that was a healthier quesadilla option. And I have a photo here that I will share of what it looked like. And I mean, it looks like quesadillas and some yummy salsa. Not much to it, but um, honestly, pretty darn yummy. Well, I feel like that would be a way to get me to eat my zucchini because <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan, but I love quesadillas and with all the cheese in there and everything, it sounds great. I think it's a perfect idea to get kids to eat their vegetables and like you said, use up all your zucchini over the summer. So 
That sounds wonderful. Yeah, I think, yeah, I know our my grandkiddos would love it. Mm -hmm. And they do, they put Greek yogurt on a lot of things. So they would be all over that. And if you didn't want to make the salsa, if you were doing this for like a quick lunch, you totally could. And you could just do the quesadillas with some sour cream. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I was, I thought that would be a great like summertime lunch with kids if you're trying to throw something together. So yeah, yeah I'd recommend That's... it was good. Um, Katie, how about you cooking with kiddos? Okay. Well, I also don't have kiddos and, uh, my niece and nephew are nearly grown and they live very far away. So I don't really have the experience of cooking with kids, but I imagined that this would be a very good recipe to, to cook with children. Um, it, it's something that I've been making a lot recently and it's for garden French bread pizza with pesto. And I just thought, because also not just making the pizza because kids love pizza, but also a lot of the stuff that you make the pizza with comes from the garden. And so I think that kids really appreciate sometimes seeing it go from like plant to something that they're eating. So I thought that that would be a fun thing. A little bit of a learning experience in there too, if you wanted. Uh, so anyway, the recipe, you start by making um, a walnut pesto, which is my favorite kind of pesto to make. I like using walnuts instead of um, pine nuts because they're cheaper, basically. That's the number one reason. And to me, it, it tastes the same or like comparable. So I always make walnut pesto. This particular recipe comes from onceuponachef.com. It's just walnuts, garlic cloves, basil leaves salt, pepper, olive oil, Parmesan, you know, your normal pesto ingredients, you throw those all into the food processor. Um, and then and once it's all combined, you've got pesto. And then you, uh, you make your French bread pizza, which it's funny that I call it a French bread pizza. That's just what I call it when it's pizza that you make out of a loaf of bread, whether the bread is French or not. In my case, I usually actually use Italian bread. Um, Meyer has these mini Italian loaves in their bakery section that are a dollar. They're the perfect size for these particular pizzas, but you really can use whatever kind of bread, like whatever kind of crusty loaf bread, and you want to cut it lengthwise. And then if they're really big pieces, sometimes I like to cut it in half as well to get like four even pieces of bread. And then you put them in the oven under the broiler, just uh, usually for about five minutes, but you really want to be watching it to make sure that your bread doesn't burn. So that's something that kids can help with their eyeballs and make sure that those that that doesn't get burned. And then you remove the bread from the oven, let it cool down for a minute or two until you can hold it. And then you take some garlic cloves and you just scrape it along the whole crusty bread to get that nice garlic flavor onto your bread. Then you generously sauce it with your pesto that you made. Um, your pesto comes has the basil from the garden. Uh, I forgot to mention that. So I picked a ton of that prior to making it. Have like the most ridiculous basil plants I've ever seen this year. So I've been making a ton of pesto especially for this recipe. So you sauce your bread with your pesto, and then uh, you add a little base layer of shredded mozzarella, then sliced tomatoes from the garden. The larger ones are good for this layer, so like larger sliced tomatoes, and then some more basil, some red onion. Then I like to do some slices of fresh mozzarella as well on top of that. A little bit more shredded mozzarella, and then finally, I like to dot the top of the pizzas with little tiny cherry tomatoes. The smaller you can find, the better, because they just look cute and fun. You bake your pizzas. They take about 10 or 15 minutes in the oven, and you just wait until the cheese is slightly brown on top. Take them out, let them cool. And one thing that I think would be really nice for kids, too, is you can take these and slice them into, like, breadstick size pieces so they're easy for little hands to hold and I just think that this would be a fun thing and of course you can use whatever toppings you want for this but I think in particular the garden aspect of this would be fun with kiddos but that's my recipe yeah that sounds super good I completely agree gardening and making pizza is fun for kids and mm -hmm. 
I love that because my problem with pizzas, I'm just, I don't like making dough and mm-hmm. I often don't like store-bought pizza dough. So I love get the idea of getting some decent bread and then that's kind of, then that problem is solved. So yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, very much so. Nice. All right. I Back. would also concur though that um, tying in the, the garden with the, the cooking, I know that our kiddos like to you know pick things from the garden so Uh, very good so um well I do have two small grandchildren and so I knew that I wanted to you know enlist them in whatever we were going to make and it worked out because um we had been out of town and we had so we we had uh bought a rotisserie chicken and so we had leftover rotisserie chicken and we were going to have dinner with the kids and I said okay this is what we're going to do we're going to make chicken croissants that I I saw this on food.com but I varied it uh what it called for is to take some cooked chicken uh a brick of cream cheese and also I'm going to share I'll share my recipe I'll share the link I doubled the recipe but I did not double the cream cheese I know right but it was plenty uh so it was the rotisserie chicken, cream cheese, and then we sauteed some um, onions and mushrooms and added that to it. And got I got help stirring it up. It was a little, you know, hard for little hands, but, um, and I do have pictures of the help I got, but also the finished product. Um, so you, you take the, you take poppin' fresh or, you know, like uh, crescent rolls. Uh, I use two packages of those. And you take two of the triangles together to make a rectangle. And then you put your chicken stuff in the center. And then you pinch up the the corners, which the kids did help with that. And they were so cute doing that. And, um, and then you bake it for 20 minutes. And they came out really good and, and they liked them. So like I said, I have a picture of the finished product. And um we we ate the four adults and two little kiddos, and it was it was well received. Yeah, and that brought back some memories for me. I feel like that's one of the first things I ever made was something really? very, very similar to that, wrapped up in those rolls with some cream cheese. I haven't had that in so many years, but I remember it being really tasty. (laughs) Yeah, it was good. In fact, there was leftover, you know, chicken and cream cheese. I had it on a sandwich and it was delicious. So yeah, yeah, it's, uh, there's just so much you can do with, with rotisserie chicken. Throw some cream cheese in there and. That's a really good idea, actually. That's sounds yummy. Yeah, it is yummy. It's yummy for, it's, it's not just for kids either. No, I was going to say, that seems like an easy yeah. dinner for adults as well. It totally yeah. is. And they look really cute. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Uh, well, we have any other comments about our cooking with kiddos? No. <laughs> well, thank you, people out there, for watching Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aedale.org to find the recipes we talked about and share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we will be talking about, oh yeah, it's better with bacon. We look forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Share, share, share.